Addy's soldiers. Ooh, look at that sleeve. It's like 1600s milkmaid meets pillowcase, but make it fashion. I'm sorry if you can hear my fan, but it is so damn hot in Vancouver right now that I now know what my overheated laptop charger feels like because I too feel like I am going to die. I did a video like this on my other channel, The Word Nerds, maybe like a week or two ago. I'll link that. So you can go check that out if you want a more TLDR version of said video, um, but also do be warned that I'm most likely going to make most of the same jokes in this video because uh, it's finals season and I only have so much excess brain power. In case you don't know me, hi, my name is Rachel. I am 25 years old, which means that I've been an adult for seven years now, and as you can see from my shelves, I read a whole lot of YA books. YA or young adult books are any kind of book where the protagonists are usually around the ages of 13 to 18 that usually deals with themes of of self-discovery, family, first love, taking down evil governments. And if you look a little closer, you can also see that there are some regular adult fantasy novels on here from the regular fiction section, uh, but you can definitely tell that YA books outrank them probably like seven to one. A question that I get quite often with my reading choices is why do you still read young adult novels if you're an adult? And very simply put, it's because I like them. All right, that's the video. See you all next week. Hope you have a great day. But no, for real, it's like a little bit more than that. I usually prefer a young adult novel because I feel like the pacing is fast enough that I don't get bored. It tends to be a little bit closer to my age group than say a regular fiction book with like a 30 or 40 year old protagonist. And I just find that they're the most entertaining and the most imaginative. This is a little side note is that YA as a genre is its own genre. So you can have a regular fiction or a regular fantasy or regular sci-fi, mystery, horror, what have you. They all have their own section when you go into a bookstore. Young adult is kind of like the umbrella term for all of those subgenres because you can have young adult fantasy, young adult contemporary, and young adult sci-fi. There's really not that much different between a regular adult fantasy novel and a young adult fantasy novel except for the age of the protagonists and maybe a little bit more mature content in the adult one. But all of those different genres fall under one genre because it's all for young people. And in that way I think you can be a little bit more imaginative if you write YA because you don't have such strict genre boundaries and you can cross over and genre mash and try different things based on what you want to write instead of having to write for a specific set of standards per genre. Does that make sense? So when I get people saying, oh, you still read YA or, oh, you're writing a YA novel, but you're an adult. Why don't you write something with an adult character? I find it comes with a very judgmental tone. I don't like that very much. You know, I kind of get it because as you age and become an adult and get more worldly and understand more about yourself, there's going to be things from your childhood that you leave behind, maybe like likes or interests or whatever. But sometimes those things follow you into adulthood and there's absolutely nothing wrong with continuing to like something for multiple decades of your life as long as it's not like harming you or like overtaking your life in any way. Now, of course, I don't care what other people read and I know many other readers are lovely and wonderful and just love the idea that other people are reading. So when people come to me with that judgmental tone of, oh, you still read YA, I have to ask, do you enjoy reading or do you enjoy being pretentious? We all know that one person that's like, um, I only read classics from 1933 to 1940 and everything you like is trash because that was the golden age of literature, which really just shows how out of touch they are with the last, I don't know, 40, 50 years of publishing. Young adult has grown as its own genre, which is quite surprising how fast it's been you know, picking up. There were a couple of books focused at a younger audience in the 70s and 80s, but it didn't really hit until maybe the late 1990s and then really started booming with the mega bestseller absolute cult classic Twilight. I know these things because in my last semester um, for my gender studies class, I wrote my final paper on the devaluation and paradoxical invisibility of female and queer authors in a young adult space. So I know my stuff. <laughs> and if I remember to, I will also link uh, some articles that I found helpful in my research down below if you want to read more about that. And at this point, I'm probably losing you, so let me just break down what all that means for me loving YA. Firstly, the word devaluation is pretty self-explanatory. It is the devaluing of something based on what that society or culture or group of people find valuable. And I'll say worldwide, we have a very masculine bias. So that means women's bodies, voices, jobs, activities, objects associated with femininity of any kind, 
become m less valuable the more that women and feminized people interact with those things. YA and romance especially get this treatment because they are mainly female authors writing for a majority of a feminine audience. Now, of course, there are men and boys that read YA and read romance and read everything else. What They're not saying that they don't count. Uh, but for the most part, it is a mostly feminine space. And you can also be a feminized person if you are a man or a queer person or an immigrant based on what kinds of positions or jobs or hierarchies in society that you fall into. So the fact that YA is a mostly feminine space, paired with the fact that teen is usually categorized under children's literature, completely infantilizes and devalues the entire genre as a whole. So even if, say, YA horror had a larger male audience than YA fantasy, it wouldn't really matter because it's still majority female and feminized, so everything just gets pushed off the table. It doesn't matter how successful that book is, or if it hits a bestseller list, or if it gets a lot of money, the fact that it is YA in the first place, it just automatically makes it of lesser value to society. <laughs> we live in a society. And this is where I slightly want to talk about popular fiction. Think about the top bestseller YA novels. Uh, Throne of Glass, One of Us is Lying, Raven Boys, Dread Queen! Oh my god, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and uh, To All the Boys I Loved Before. These books are considered extreme successes within the industry, but if you told somebody that you're reading them, they will automatically look down on you. Even though maybe they sold more copies than like the latest Michael Crichton. And this leads to a lot of people that read YA or read other like feminized genres trying to distance themselves from that genre. And then so what we get the whole like, I'm not like other girls, I don't read that. But it's like everybody is like that other girl. Everybody likes something. Everyone's going to like a popular thing. And I think it's just ridiculous that we're like, I can't like that popular thing, but I can like that popular thing. I get it somewhere back in our caveman brain is like, well, I don't want to distance myself from the pack because then I'm gonna starve or whatever kind of, you know, archaic things back in there somewhere. Popular fiction means it is popular with a large audience. And how do you become a popular writer? You write things that a lot of people like. <laughs> Romance and thriller and fantasy are ridiculously huge genres because a lot of people like to read them. And are you gonna say that, like, bestseller Neil Gaiman is not a good author because his books are super popular with everybody even though he's written like freaking two billion? No. Don't ever let anybody make you feel bad for liking what you like. And I don't mean just books, but for me I mean just books. And animal skulls. And if anybody makes you feel bad about reading the things you read or loving the things you love, that just means that they are closed-minded bigots. Like just because it's not something that you like doesn't make it wrong, you absolute uncultured walnut. And if you're just gonna rip apart a genre because you don't like it and it's stupid, you're not special, all right? You're not the first person in the history of the world to look down on young adult books, all right? You're not special for hating women. You're not special for hating something that other people like. Oh my god, this could be a whole other rant with like, everybody has that one professor that's like, you read sci-fi? Well, um, that's not high literature, so I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And there's the age-old argument of, oh, graphic novels are books with pictures. That's not real literature. And it's like, fuck off, Susan. Just because your son prefers reading Batman over Grapes of Wrath doesn't mean he's never gonna equate to anything in his life, unlike you with that attitude. Let people like and read what they want to read, and none of this I'm not like other girls business. No, we have enough gender oppression already. I don't need more from the same genre. Genre? Gender? All right, mic drop. When I started filming, there was ice in this. I find the whole study of books fascinating. I find the whole study of gender fascinating. I find the whole study of like marketing, especially. Ooh, I could do a whole video on that. Don't need to get me started. Or maybe you do, I don't know. Do you want that? Let me know. I also did a video a couple years ago about books not being gendered, which is going to appear up here somewhere. I think, if editing Rachel gets her shit together. Also let me know your experiences or thoughts in the comments down below, and just don't forget, you can love whatever you want to love. Don't make anybody make you feel bad about it. I think people are so used to just kind of going with the flow that if you have to stand up and say, no, I like that, people are like, oh, that's... well that's weird. But it's like, yeah, but would you rather be weird and still have the thing you love, or be like, cool, but like not ever be able to enjoy the thing that you like? I'm trying to go for some like deep advice time with Rachel, but uh, it's I've, my last brain cell has completely fried. You know where to click to like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are, and I will see you all next week. Bye.